Life Stories. But the teacher was not happy that she had to have these extra kids in the classroom. It was an inconvenience for her. Um, and so it was a very hard time. But God showed me this picture at that time where I was just so heartbroken. And he showed me a picture of me walking through a dark tunnel. And all I could see was this blackness. I knew I was in a black, dark tunnel. And right at the end of this tunnel, I saw a light, just a speck. And so I had to start walking towards this light. And as I started walking, I almost tripped over something that was on the, on the ground. And as I bent down, there was a real stench and I kind of belted back. And I went back down to see, and it was a woman lying on the floor. And she must have been there for, I don't know how long. But the smell of her was repulsive. But I, I was compelled to ask her if she was okay. So I didn't know if, you know, if she's dead or uh, what she was doing down there. And I just knew that she, I needed to ask if she helped if I could help her and she she let me help her when I got over the kind of smell I helped her up and I said look there's light at the end of the tunnel and shall we you know let's walk towards it and so we slowly but surely we started walking towards this light the two of us and as my eyes began to adjust to the light I started seeing more and more people in this tunnel. Some of them had just gotten so used to living there. Some of them were hanging up washing. Some of them were cooking. Some of them were just sitting and staring with glazed eyes. And I kept asking those who were on the sides of this tunnel, join us, the light is up front. Come along, come with us, we're going towards the light. And then the picture kind of fast forwarded and I saw myself stepping out into the sunlight and there was this little English quintessential English cottage um, and I just and there was a beautiful like an apple tree in, in the garden and I just stood and felt the sun on my face and it was as if the Lord promised me I will get through this and when I get through this this journey through one of the darkest times in my life will not be in vain, that God would use it to speak to others of his kindness, of his relentless love, his great grace, and his mercy on us, that his voice spoke loud to me, and it's what's changed me forever. Um, and then just fast forward to Lent this year, um, you know, I, uh, last year, at the start of um, 2020, I was actually looking back in my journals and I, I saw that in uh, the end of 2019, God had given me, uh, I journaled on and off. Um, and in December 9, 2019, God had given me a promise that he was going to give me a gift in 2020 and I must accept it and I didn't really think anything of it I just was writing I, you know I learned how to journal when I was a young girl I would write a letter to God and then I would imagine what God would write back to me as his child as his daughter as his beloved and based on his word I would just write whatever came to mind and it was kind of just based on the Bible just flooding out just spontaneously and then occasionally I would catch something that sounded like it it kind of jumped out and it was fresh and new and, and I would think that that really sounds like something that's from God it can it's confirmed in God's word uh, and and then in early 2020 
I was looking back at my journals and I'd written in there as well that God said he's going to give me a gift and I need to accept it. And then in the run-up to Lent 2020, like most radio presenters do, I said to the listeners, so what are you going to give up for Lent this year? And I said, well, it'll, for me, it'll probably be chocolate and alcohol or something like that. And then I went to a song. And as the song started, I just had this sense that I must give up a Netflix. And I was in the middle of a series that I really liked. So I knew this was God. But now I'd already been on this journey over the last three or four years of surrender and obedience learning, learning, learning to surrender my will, to surrender my will, to surrender my will, to obey instantly. And so I knew I had to do this. So I gave up Netflix for Lent. But I also felt at the start of Lent that God wanted to give me something. And so he wanted me to journal. So I started writing at the start of Lent. And I wrote what has now become God Speaks. 40 letters from the Father's heart. These 200 word letters based on God's word filled with love from the Father's heart. Uh, Just word, really beautiful, beautiful. Something that I, and within days, it felt a sense that God said, this is going to be for more than just you. It's going to be a book and it's going to be for more than just you. And I kind of just shelved that idea. And then um, after Lent, around about May time, we were planning on going out as a family. And God said, you need to send that. What I gave you during Lent, send it now before you go out with your family to a publisher. And so I found a publisher who accepts unsolicited work. um, And they liked it. And when God said that this is going to be a book, I could really envision it as being something beautiful because what he gave me was beautiful. It was like nothing I'd read, like nothing I'd written before. It was, I knew that it was from the Father's heart. This was from God. And so I wanted it to be a hardcover gift book, something that would be treasured for forever. And when I spoke to the publishers, that's exactly what they said. I just started weeping because it felt like the Lord had and he is continuing to transform me, that I am new. And it's only by his grace. He's helped me through years and years and years of rebellion and of striving with God, of wrestling with God. 
that he's helped me by his spirit. He's, he knows my heart. And through all of this, he's known my heart. He's known that there will come a day when Ruth will turn <laughs> her will over to me, surrender her will. And when I did, just the joy that he's given me in serving him. And now it's with such a willing heart. Uh, I just love Jesus. And I know the same is for you. You know, maybe you have also wrestled with God uh, in one form or another, in one way or another. And you just think, you know, there's one particular area of my life where I just feel like I don't know that I can have true freedom in this area. Um, I just feel like it's, it's a place where I just have a constant battle. And so I want to just encourage you to, um, to pray. I'm going to pray for you that tonight you will know that it's the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. God is so kind. He's patient. He doesn't want you or me or anybody to be lost without him. Jesus said that he came to give us life and life in abundance. All of those years of rebellion proved to me that life without God leaves me unfulfilled, leaves me unsatisfied. It leaves us lacking and wanting more. Uh, you know, at the end of Lent, I try to go back to that program and I'd lost my taste for it. Just didn't do it for me anymore. Because through all of those days of Lent and a few days afterwards as well, writing those letters from God had fed my soul. So I want to pray with you right now. Maybe you have wrestled with God all of your life and tonight you feel like this is it. I want to, I want that. I want what you've got, Ruth. I want to come into alignment with God's word. I want to line up with what God says about me, about my identity. I want to believe God's word over my life. God is speaking to you tonight. And so will you pray with me to completely surrender your life to Jesus? Not just part of it. He wants all of you. He has wooed you and you are here today for a reason. Heavenly Father, thank you that you love me. God, thank you that you've made a way for me to know you, for me to hear you speak over my life. Through Jesus Christ, your son. Your word says that if I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ, you are the son of God, that you died and rose again, that I will be saved. And so tonight, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ, you are the Son of God, the only way for me to know you, God. I accept you and receive you as my Lord and Savior. I want to serve you for the rest of my days. I'm all in, God. I want to serve you completely. I surrender all. I come into line with your word of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and teach me, help me, lead me. Help me to do your will. Help me to follow you with all of my heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen to that. Thank you, Ruth, for sharing such a wonderful story. And thank you for the way you finished with that wonderful prayer. Please, if you prayed that prayer with Ruth tonight, 
Let us know by contacting us on our hotline, which is 07943-550-287. Or if you're outside the UK, then put plus four four in front of that number. You can phone, WhatsApp, or text, and someone will get back to you as soon as possible. Or you can also go to our website, lifestoriesworldwide.com, and you can put a message on there. And also you can click on the app which tells you, how can I know God? How can I know God? You can also get a Bible app, a Gideon's a Bible app, which will help you. As Ruth said tonight, by reading the word of God, your life can be completely transformed. And I thank you, Ruth, for sharing tonight that it's not all plain sailing. It's not all easy when you come to Jesus, that we do have challenges. It doesn't mean that nothing will go ever, ever go wrong but we've got someone there who can help in every situation. And let me encourage you to uh, get hold of Ruth's book. Uh, messages from, what's it called again, Ruth? God Speaks. God Speaks. 40 Letters from the Father's Heart. God Speaks, 40 Letters from the Father's Heart. And the, the official launch is this Wednesday at 7.30 p.m., and you can follow that on uh, Ruth's website, which is ruthoreillysmith.com. And how can people get hold of that book, Ruth? Yeah, they can get it from there as well. So if you just go on to the website, ruthoreillysmith.com, and just click on the God Speaks tab, you can get a hold of the book. You can join us for the online event, which is on Wednesday at half past seven. You can read more God Speaks letters that are not in the book at the moment because the Lord kept giving them to me after Lent, which is very kind of him. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Alan. Oh, bless you, Ruth. I'm going to hand over to George now. I think he has some questions for you. Thanks, George. Thank you. Thank you, Alan, and thank you, Ruth, for such a wonderful story. I mean, as Alan said, it wasn't all plain sailing. Now, you normally work on radio, so let me make you feel at home, okay? Here we go. Let me just make you feel at home. Here, <laughs> Have you got a pair as well? <laughs> Champion. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, you, you said that, obviously, you come from South Africa. I, I've got one of those as well, yeah? Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, what do you <laughs> Um, born in South Africa with a lo loving family, uh, but you may not know, but statistically they say there's 110 million people worldwide who claim Irish ancestry. Are you one of those with a name like O'Reilly? Definitely. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> Love my Irish heritage. It's from my, my father's side. He's the O'Reilly. Amen. Now, you, you mentioned your brothers and sisters as well, and you came through a loving family and came to faith. Um, have your brothers and sisters also come through and gone into the faith? Most of them have. I'm still believing for my sister Mary. You can pray for her. You will. <laughs> um, that her and her family would come to know Christ. Uh, the Lord gave me a beautiful picture of her, actually, recently, and I did share that with her. God gave me a dream of her. Um, it, it looked like an autumn season and Jesus walking with her in the autumn. And so I just had that sense that in the autumn of her life, she would walk with Jesus again. And I'm believing for that. Amen. Now, you said you came up with a loving family, learned about the Bible and went to church and everything like that. I just want to read one comment that we got here, okay? Okay. It says, I can't believe you compared yourself with Jacob. You have the voice of an angel. I love hearing you on UCB too. Your voice is so calming and therapeutic. If you swore at me, I wouldn't take offense because of your voice. <laughs> <laughs> However, I'm pleased God has cleansed you from using French. <laughs> now, the question I have on that particular comment is, how did a good girl like yourself ever learn to speak French? Mm. Well, I had, uh, I actually had an Italian friend and she taught me all the swear words in Italian. Oh. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I have to be very careful when I think about Italian. I mean, I love Italy, uh, but 
really, I just try and stick to the chow. <laughs> now, I, w- I was quite deliberate, actually, in searching out for, look, if, you, if, you're, in, if you're in school, uh, you know, it doesn't, doesn't take you long to pick up some, some words that you think I, you could, I could probably <laughs> use to fit in. <laughs> Did you, to quote, mentioning school, did you learn some when you were teaching as well? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I did. Just reflecting, because Alan, Alan was a teacher as well. Now, you, as you say, you grew up in a loving family, you learned all about the Bible and everything. But why do you think it took you so long to read the whole Bible? Great question. I think that um, it just... It felt like it was too much for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I just, it felt like it was too big, too mm-hmm. big a book and, and just too overwhelming. I, I was never really taught how to read it mm-hmm. from cover to cover. And, and I, was, I guess I was never taught that that was possible, that it was good, you know. Um, I suppose... The, um, the general kind of consensus when anybody spoke about books like Numbers and Leviticus was, you know, the way that people would even say those books of the Bible would be with almost disdain or just horror or, you know, such almost negativity that I guess it just fed into that sense that it was going to be just too overwhelming. I wouldn't understand it. I, I didn't even want to make an effort um, to get into it. But that's the wonderful thing about God's word is that uh, I have found, and I mean, there are wonderful, um, you know, kind of chronological ways mm-hmm. of reading the Bible these days through apps and so on. But, um, and I've not actually done that yet. I, I would like to do that. But what I've been doing is just kind of reading it through um, from from the beginning to the end. At the moment, my kind of, the, the way that I um, read the Bible at the moment is one Old Testament chapter and one New Testament chapter. So uh, at the moment, I'm in Isaiah okay. and in Revelation. Tough uh, books, very tough books, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you pick the easy ones there, mine. <laughs> Holy Spirit for wisdom uh, before I read. Now, you mentioned, of course, as well, you made a commitment at five and then you had the... Uh, the yes or no moment at 13. How important do you think it is then that we should also teach children the gospel? Oh, huge. Uh, massive. I'll tell you a story about my children. Uh, and mm. my prayer is really that they will come to know Jesus for themselves. But at the, at the moment, they're young enough for us to enforce church and Bible yeah. reading and prayer on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lovingly and with much grace. You're course. going to church and that's it. <laughs> um, <laughs> you will go to church. Yeah, church. Well, there's no PS4. <laughs> so you choose, you know. Yeah. Um, we can kind of do that still. Uh, but, but my prayer is that the good seed sown in their hearts will one day bring forth good fruit in season. Um, but Going back to the start of 2020, um, I have for years given the children a devotional book for them to to study, to do just a short little devotional in the morning before they have breakfast. So just a short time for them to connect with God, give their day to God. Um, And this was kind of the only way that I knew how is just by them like a little teen devotional or when they were younger, um, one that was kind of age specific to them. So they were getting to the habit of connecting with God in the morning before they head out to school. Life Stories.
लाइफ स्टोरी